embarking on a big spinning project can be quite overwhelming. So in this video, I'm gonna share the process I use when I'm going to do a big spin. If you're new here, my name is Becca and I'm a hand spinner, knitter and newbie weaver and you're very welcome to my home in West Wales. This video was prompted from a question I got from Nancy on Instagram and she asked how do I kind of get over that overwhelming feeling of oh this fibre will never end and I, I can relate to that completely. So thank you very much Nancy for letting me talk about it on YouTube and I certainly have some solutions. I do want to point out that these are solutions that work for me with my ADHD brain and so I work in a way that means I actually finish projects because I could quite easily just never finish any projects at all. So just bear that in mind. So it would be really, really lovely if you have a process that really works for you, if you actually put it in the comments below, because there is more than one way of doing everything. There is always more than one way of doing everything. So in this video, this is my way. I'm gonna talk about other ways I know spinners work, but for the main part, this is how I do it. In part two of this video, I'm also going to give you some project updates and just ideas that I have for my creative season to come. Okay, so the big spin. I'm sort of going to assume that you've chosen your fibre and your first stage is going to be getting it ready to spin. So that could be quite a long process in itself. If you work with raw fibre, obviously that's going to be a, a really long process. If you work with comb top or bats or, you know, something that you buy in and it's ready to rock, then obviously that's not a big process. I tend to do a lot of blending. That is my sort of, my favourite way to prepare fibre is on my blending board. And I like to work from bats which I then pre-draft. Not always but it is kind of my favourite. So down here I have a big basket of bats that I prepared. Gosh it will be quite a few weeks ago now and that is that is one of the dangers of being multi-passionate is that you know projects get put on the sideline. However I find that if I can get all the fibre prep done in one go, that I've got enough energy and enough kind of, I want to say dopamine, which I, uh, is it dopamine? I don't know. You know, I, okay, I have an ADHD brain, but uh, I don't really know the ins and outs of everybody else's. But I basically, I find if I do my fibre prep, that's ready to rock and I can do it. I then have to kind of walk away from it for a little while. And this now, I walked away from this, mm, yeah, I reckon this is about two weeks ago, if not more. But now I'm ready to spin. I've been doing lots of other things in between, of course, but I'm ready to tackle this. And the way I tackle it is as follows. So let's go back to bobbins now. Okay, bobbins. Okay, I have four bobbins in total. I've got one on the wheel, I'm pointing over there, you can't see that, the wheel's down there. One on the wheel and three stored on here with all sorts of really random stuff on there. And the reason I don't have any more than four bobbins, and it is a very intentional reason, is so that I don't have tons and tons of random stuff on there that I don't know what to do with. I've got quite a lot of random stuff on it and I've only got four bobbins but it's intentional. Now, if you can cope with lots of bobbins, it's probably quite a good thing to do if you're going to do a big spin. And certainly when I used to go and learn about fibre prep, I used to go to a production spinner's house and she had lots of bobbins and she would spin, just spin until all the, all the prep was done. She'd be, prep all her fibre and just spin, 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 fill up all her bobbins until she had singles on all her bobbins. So my way of doing it is I create 25 gram bats, then I spin 25 grams on one bobbin, 
25 grams on another bobbin and then I let it rest. I was taught that you should let it rest for two days. My production spinning friend kind of went, oh, you can get away with 24 hours. I have also spun and plied on the same day. I wouldn't do that with a really fine, precious fibre. I've in my life, I've spun a lot of Jacob. Jacob is extremely forgiving. It's really easy to spin. Yeah, I just spun it and plied it on the same day. I've done that. OK, I've done that. Don't arrest me, fiber arts, please. So. Ideally, I spin my two little bobbins, 25 grams on each, let them sit for two days, ply them up, let that bobbin sit for 24 hours or so. Then I can get on with spinning another two bobbins up. And basically I kind of go round and round in a circle. So the stuff that I plied the day before has been sat for 24 hours. I then take it off, put it on my nitty noddy, ideally let it sit for another 24 hours. Don't always do that, but you know, if you can. So it's quite a long, slow process, but I really am a process person. I would quite happily not knit for weeks on end, but I have to spin pretty much every day. And that's just my thing. And I, I guess we all have our own different things, don't we? So if I'm doing a big project, that's the way I tackle it. I don't do very many big projects. And, and you'll see on this channel, I just don't do big projects. And if I do, I kind of spin them quite chunky. So it's quite a fast process. But, uh, you know, I, it's horses for courses, isn't it? It really is going to 100 pen. Hmm, put my teeth back in. It's going to 100 percent depend on what you like to do and how you like to work. So that's how I work. I don't know whether it's the right way. I don't know whether it's the way that's taught. I really don't know, but it works for me. So if it works for me, that's fine, isn't it? So again, if you've got a method that works for you, please share it below because it's really helpful for other spinners. That was a bit of a long winded way of saying all my fibre prep is done on one day in one sitting. Then I spin two small bobbins of 25 grams each, let them sit minimum 24 hours, ideally 48 hours, ply them, let it sit for 24 hours, onto the nitty noddy, let it sit for 24 hours, then finish it. And it's long and slow, but that's what I like. Now, the other thing to talk about with a big spin is that what a lot of people do is that they rewind their bobbins. So maybe you haven't got lots and lots of bobbins, like me, I've only got four bobbins. What you can do and it's quite often recommended if you're doing a big spin is that you rewind your bobbin onto something like a cheap plastic weaving bobbin that you'd get in a boat shuttle. And then you can distribute out your different singles, kind of, you can mix and match so that if you've got a really uneven one, you can try and match it with a more even um, single to ply it with. and. The theory is that you then get a much more consistent yarn overall when you're spinning a big amount. Not something I've particularly done because A, I don't really spin big amounts like that and B, um, I haven't got the equipment. And I think as is becoming fairly clear, I do try and keep my equipment to a minimum. I'm not somebody that wants all the toys. I live in quite a small space and I can easily get very cluttered. In fact, I'm, you know, generally my house can be very cluttered. And so I have to work really hard at actually keeping the clutter to a minimum. Otherwise it gets really overwhelming. So one of the ways to do that is actually not have that much stuff. Um, it is very tempting to buy all the toys. And, you know, when I was when I was doing this, I have to say the appeal of a drum carder was kind of quite huge. But actually, you know, I haven't really got space for it and they're expensive and I probably wouldn't use it that much. So, you know, that's why I don't. 
Okay, so Nancy, I do hope that was helpful. I hope people leave some comments below so you can see what their methods are. And I am now going to take a breath. Today, I invite you to take a breath of sea air as we enjoy the beautiful scenery of the historic harbour at Porthgain. This was once quite an industrial site, but now it bustles with a different type of person. A person who wants to walk along the beautiful cliff path or enjoy fish and chips at the famous Shed Bistro. And I can tell you, we did enjoy our fish and chips. The small harbourside village now boasts two art galleries and a popular pub. But you don't have to stand on ceremony here. Muddy boots and muddy dogs are always welcome. Many local artists paint this scene and I'm no exception. So here is my watercolour version of this scene just after a storm. I hope you are fully refreshed and ready for part two of the video. So last video was a video about sowing some seeds for my dye garden that I'm going to try and grow this year. And I'm really self-consciously, when I was putting this on, <laughs> this scarf on, I was like, yeah, this is not at all naturally dyed, <laughs> is it? But it was a present and I really like it. So, you know, okay, not naturally dyed, but I think it's fab. So, that's a bit of an aside, isn't it? Anyway, so the dye garden. Yeah, so I've got germination and the um, chamomile has germinated, the woad has germinated and the marigolds have germinated. And the other ones are still there. So fingers crossed in the next week or so, I'll get germination from those. So I'm very pleased with that. And uh, I will carry on sharing my journey as a new, grower of dye plants. I was going to say a new gardener, but of course I'm not a new gardener. I've been gardening since I was a kid, but I've never grown dye plants before. So a new dye garden gardener. Why do I not script these? I really should write this stuff down. Right, so that was very exciting. Uh, project update. Okay, now. I've been following along with um, Carrie at My Wool and Mitten and she's been doing the sock spin along and these socks look like they haven't progressed since the last time I showed them. But they have in fact because I frogged the last one I'd started because I just didn't like it. It just, uh, I just, you know, long story short, I didn't like it. So I have now changed to knitting the Pippi Sock, which is uh, in spin to knit, and it's a pattern for a double knit, which is basically what I ended up with. And seeing on Instagram, I think a lot of people ended up with a double knit. And the reason I quite often don't spin a three ply for socks and I use a two ply is because I find it virtually impossible to get anything other than a double knit when I'm using a three ply or making a three ply. But I'm kind of quite enjoying this Pippi sock and it's double knit. And I have to say, I think I'm a little bit converted to three ply as a sock yarn. I think it really works. Um, so yeah, I will reserve judgment until I've actually got the socks on my feet and I'm trying to put them in shoes. Uh, I am aware of clogs quite often, so I don't I don't wear kind of really tight shoes. So I might be fine with a double knit, but we will see. So that project is slowly, slowly creeping along and I'll uh, I will share those when I finally, finally finish them. The next thing I've been working on this week is and that's my very scrappy watercolour is just updating the colours for my website and my newsletter, which sort of means I'm doing brand colours. I try to avoid words like that because I, you know, 
I mean, really, am I a brand? I'm a personal brand. It, it just, it sounds too weird. However, I am quite into design and I am very into colours, so I really wanted to just kind of, yeah, just give it a little spring clean or spring clean. No, that's the wrong word, but just give it a little kind of whoosh, new look, new colours. And I did share on the community posts the two different colour schemes that I was considering and you very clearly told me which one you liked. So I shall pop this on the screen somewhere, probably there. Yeah, I think it'll be there. And uh, yeah, so thank you for your feedback. When I did them, when I actually kind of sat on the computer and kind of made up the graphic, I was like kind of, oh, I'm not sure I like both of them. But actually once they were kind of on screen and I put them next to each other, yeah. I liked the one you all like as well, so I think those are the colours I'm going to go with. And the other thing I'm going to share is a very scrappy mind map. And I am somebody that really likes a mind map. And if you've not come across it, it basically is a, it's like a visual brain dump. So you kind of put your, um, your main theme in the centre and then it has lots of kind of stalks growing off and I find it a really useful way of just recording my thoughts and this really is going to be what I'm working on for this coming season because we are sort of just, I, has the spring equinox passed? Uh, yes, yes we've, we've just passed the spring equinox so um, kind of the next season of creating for me is really going to shift slightly and the shift is going to be that obviously the garden is going to take a lot of my time. I'm also a beekeeper and yesterday rather than recording this video I actually went and checked my bees, made sure that they'd got through the winter and they still had stores and that you know kind of everything was going okay and I put queen excluders on which unless you're a beekeeper is going to mean absolutely nothing to you but I did that and obviously that takes a fair amount of time and also I don't necessarily want to be knitting jumpers at this time of the year so my focus is going to switch slightly I will still be working with wool because you know I am a wool addict so my focus is going to be more things for the home and I want to weave a doormat and I need a new tea cosy and you know various things like that but because I work very slowly then they'll probably take me the next three months I would think and that might be very frustrating from a kind of um, someone who likes fast progress that's going to be frustrating but I like slow progress because that's the way I am. I just, I like to potter about, do my little projects and just slowly enjoy them. So that's fine. And I will, of course, share the process. I have one more thing that I really wanted to share with you and it is a book. So I just, um, oh, excuse me. And this is my library book at the moment 52 weeks of easy knits this book was written for me i'm sure it was because these very simple easy knits are just are absolutely my cup of tea it's really size inclusive because i have noticed working with the older books that i have is that unless you're a teeny tiny woman then uh yeah the patterns are just no good for you you're gonna to have to sit there and do a load of maths which obviously you can do but you know if it's actually done for you that's kind of nice isn't it so yeah very impressed by this it is going back to the library because I probably I'm not going to take any more kind of knitting projects on for the moment but I'm definitely going to get it out of the library again and in fact I think I might even buy it for myself because yeah really like those okay so this has felt like a lot of talking in this video. I am keen to try and do my two videos a week. So one video kind of beginning-ish of the week is going to be for the dyeing 
because I know not everybody is interested in the dyeing, but um, mostly I think natural dyeing. You see, I'm still, oh, I don't know whether I can give up my acid dyes yet. I think probably by the end of this year, I will make the decision because I, I really, oh, I love purple. What can I say? I love purple and I'm really struggling to find good, fast, natural purple that I like. Um, everybody tells me logwood. Logwood is not that fast. It it fade it washes out and also it fades in the sun. I'm maybe I'm doing something wrong. I mean, if you have worked a lot with logwood, then maybe give me some tips. But I I do not find it a particularly great dye. I just don't think it. Um, I just don't think it's fast. I think is the the shortest way of putting it. So, yeah. On that note, I think I'm going to say goodbye and. Have a really lovely creative time, my friends, until we meet again.